Sisters of the Order, welcome back to the Order. I am Celtic Templar, and yes, guys, we are now with uh, well over a thousand subscribers, and pretty much this is the first episode on who is deadliest. Now, this is going to be off of Deadliest Warrior, which uh, I know this show has been pretty much gone for a long while, but I technically I liked this show when I was young, and I thought to myself, you know what, I have to make a video series on this due to the fact that the series kind of got a lot of things wrong. And for this first starter up, we're actually going to be going to the first episode, which is the Apache versus Gladiators. Now, I want to put this out here. Uh, pretty much, we have to understand that the show, uh, they are pretty much state that these guys are specialists or uh, history guys. They're actually not, which, in truth, actually most of the time they just cut Hollywood uh, type groups just uh, do this well uh, video series which I know I know some of them were and such but the thing is they mostly just run things on numbers and that's about it and here's the thing just because you type something in a computer doesn't mean it's true in fact there are more than a few hundred of logistics that actually show a major problem with this how so uh, kind of obvious one major thing is, I have to put this out here, the weapons that they are using are somewhat historically correct, but the thing is, the weapons they're using, they're slightly using them wrong to the historical factor that they would have used them as. Now, maybe you not, not know this historical form uh, of weapons. Well, uh, pretty much the weapons they used for the gladiators were the scissor and castus for the short range, which the scissors is known as to be a dangerous weapon entirely. And this one, I have to put this out here, is technically a punching weapon, but not just a punching weapon, but even a slicing and, well, piercing weapon with this type of hook as well. You can even, well, hook an opponent's weapon with it. But that's for another uh, part of the video. Now then, there's also the Kestis, which is technically a boxing glove. However, I don't include that because, well, it doesn't look like it will ever technically work, in truth. Now, and then we also then have the Trident and Net combo, and then the Sika Sword, and then the Sling for the Gladiators. Now, this is from the show. And then for the Apache on the show, we have the Tomahawk, the Knife, the War Club, and the Bow and Arrow, which we all know. However, they don't show their tactics or their know-how until the third season, which kind of makes it a little idiotic. And the major thing is, the third season slightly got a little more accurate to how everything was, especially as soon as they got rid of the one computer geek guy, which you gotta imagine they probably did, thought to themselves something ain't right here, so they had to recalculate everything. Now, this is where we had to talk about it in major forms. Which, the weapons that they mainly used, here's the thing, the gladiator that they used in this, they only had like one guy in the entire full, when it was fully done. They had one gladiator versus one Apache, which makes no sense because the one gladiator would not have used all these weapons, in fact. Uh, in fact, the weapons they used were mainly the weapons of the Trax, the uh, Cizero, and the Radicastus. Oh, I don't speak much of Gladiator Latin on these names, but you can see my point. That these would be the main three that they would have actually used. So it would be a three-on-three -three battle, not whatever the hell they showed on the series. Now, I want to put this out here. To the major form, uh, I have to put this out here. The armor that of which the said Gladiator would be wearing would be resistant enough to stop a said weapon from an Apache warrior, which this part I really don't like the fact that they did not actually include. In fact, they even stated on there that gladiators are always bare-chested. No, that is actually wrong. That is incredibly wrong. In truth, the real story is that uh, only a few, uh, actually, only a few, actually still, were fully, uh, well, armored up. For example, the Cizero, is one of these example. The scissor would have actually, well, uh, technically worn a different design type of, uh, well, armor. Sometimes they would be 
wearing a male or the Lorda Kahamata as it's known, depending on the timeline, or sometimes a hauberk of mail with a bronze breastplate, like what we see from Greek uh, type warfare. Now, either those two, or they would also wear scale armor. Now, scale armor is light and yet effective. In other words, this would technically be a, well, scale type of shirt, I guess you could call it that. And in doing so, the scissor type soldier or warrior would have also worn this helmet. Now, this helmet entirely is a problem for the said gladiator, I know. But the thing is, it may actually have only those little looking holes for his sight. But you got to admit that pro this guy's probably more armored up than the other two. So that's saying something. And in fact, he probably doesn't even need a shield for the armor he's wearing. In fact, he even has a fully equipped arm, which is fully, well, overlayered with armor. And in doing so, it leads up to the scissor type gauntlet, which in truth is t so dangerous enough that this guy's technically a walking tank. And the thing is, he also is also using a. Uh, uh, pretty much also some greaves with his type of gear in historical form. Now, that actually explains a lot with him, and he also wears padding, especially also with his other arm, meaning he's going to have his one arm fully enclosed in armor and plate, the other one is going to have padding, while the legs would have greaves. Now, this guy's a technically a walking tank, so I don't see the Apache probably going up against this guy incredibly winning. So, why is it that when we see the show, it shows uh, pretty much every gladiator bare, nearly bare but naked. See my point? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, but in truth, these guys were incredibly dangerous enough that they were actually hard to kill. In fact, there only was a, I think it was the Reticistus, I'm sorry if I mispronounced it anyway, that could actually, well, defeat him. And this was the guy with the trident and net combination. Now, here's the thing. Uh, as I stated, these weapons were used by different gladiators. The scissor was used by this, well, the scissor, and as well, the uh, Redicus was also given the uh, said trident and net combo, while the scissor, or uh, Sika, I should say, would actually be given to the tracks. And these guys would have different types of equipment and armor for their said equipment. So, yeah, you can see what when they're fighting, they're going to use different types of arms and armor, rather than what you think. Now, I want to put this out here. Uh, the way that in which we had to take a look at this, uh, with the tracks, these guys were technically bare chested, yes. Which, they used a small, like, scutum shield, and as well, they wore this design helmet, entirely. However, this gave them a little more uh, looking type spree, and... As well, we also see him wearing leg and arm padding, as well a leg greave in one, on one of their legs. Now, they would have used the Sika sword, but also be bare chested. But still, this guy was probably tough enough and brave enough out of them all to pretty much kill somebody entirely. Now, then there is also the Ritiures, uh, which I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing this in any way of any Italian or Latin speakers, so yeah. Uh... These guys would have been open chest, these guys would have worn no helmet, and entirely their left arm would actually have, well, padded or plate armor along the entire part. But however, there is stated to have been some form of plate armor attachment all along it, especially with this design shoulder design grief, which would always be there. In other words, a type of pauldron, if you could call it that, which was meant to stop a certain blow to the side, which... That's what I got to put this out here. If an Apache goes up against this guy, guess what? He's, his natural instinct, as soon as he sees a weapon, guess what? He's just going to tuck and guess what? The pauldron's going to save his ass. So I don't exactly see an Apache going through this thing. Uh, but then there's also the net and trident combination with it and also his greaves. So, let's put that in there to major example. If he's going to be fighting an Apache, this guy's going to pretty much probably win the battle. Uh, now, I also said that they also use a sling. So, that puts me into another example. The sling is, well, 
a sling. Now, before you all start saying, oh, the sling is a horrible weapon, they said so on the series. See, right there, right there, that, 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 that just shows how idiotic y'all are, because, no, I'm not saying all my viewers are, but you got an example to this. As soon as you say that, that shows that you don't know the sling. In fact, the sling is a dangerous weapon that was used throughout history. In fact, it's still being used as a, uh, well, non-firearm uh, type weapon, and it's actually been known to <laughs> kill somebody if they have no helmet on. In fact, uh, take a look at the story of Jason and Goliath. Uh, Goliath was technically knocked out. However, that was because David was using a short-range sling. Now, short-range slings, which there are uh, a lot of slings, I have to put this out here, but short-range slings, like they were using in that uh, episode of the first episode of Deadly's Warrior, guess what they do? They use a short-range sling, and the thing is, a short-range sling doesn't project out, uh, well, fire bigger projectiles. In fact, there is even a long-range sling that goes further than an arrow. So, here's the thing. Imagine this. You're using a sling that's the long range, and it goes further than the arrow. I don't even have to point this out here. As soon as someone in the process hits you with a projectile that goes further to the distance than an arrowhead, guess what? You're technically a dead man. Now, in fact, some of these projectiles were launched from these long-range slings were as big as my fist. Uh, if y'all don't know how big that is, that's big enough to probably uh, kill somebody, especially to the head. And that is a big, well, rock. So just imagine this. In fact, rocks are incredibly dangerous before y'all start saying, oh, they're not. Uh, Stone Age weapons were used throughout history. In fact, Native Americans, like the Apache, were also using Stone Age tomahawks to kill human beings. In fact, they actually used Stone Age tomahawks to cleave in a skull in the Deadliest Warrior episode that we were just talking about right now. That's what I have to put this out here, because if we can understand the thing, ah, uh, you don't want to get hit by a sling, especially a rock that's been projectiled out. Now, slings were also known to... There was a special design that was also meant to fling a uh, projectile, almost like a dart, but eh, they weren't used that much as the stone variation. In fact, slingers from the Balearic Islands were mercenary slingers that were hired by multiple cultures. In fact, the... Any cultures that, well, <laughs> hired them were Rome, Carthage, Greece, Egypt. You see my point there? A lot of people actually needed slingers. And in fact, slings were incredibly dangerous. In fact, take a look at the Battle of Hastings, for example. And we actually hear a story of slings being used to hurl rocks at said opponents, such as the Normans charging up the hill. In which, if done any honor stand, the uh, Saxon shield wall, there, this is how it would work. The Saxon shield wall would be like, well, pretty much right here. Well, behind them would be the slingers. Now, uh, Saxons weren't big on archery and such, but I kind of find that still weird. But uh, there is a story that states that they were used as skirmishing units for supply lines. So, yeah, but I think I'll have to do that with another video, probably. And what if Harold... Uh, Godwinson probably uh, won the Battle of Hastings and yada yada yada, but you see my point. Now, we have to understand the major form in history on the dangerous parts about slings. Slings didn't just hurl rocks, they've also been known to hurl objects of lead that of which have been, uh, had a weighted pointed tip design in which as soon as it would make contact with your brain or any part of your body, it would actually damage it enough that it would break the body. In fact, a stone can actually easily kill somebody with enough force and trauma, as they stated in the said, well, <laughs> video. Now, in that episode, uh, I want to explain to you all, this may be old, but you got to understand, they really should have realized on how wrong they were from the very beginning, so yeah. But that's why I'm making this series, so that way we can, well, get more into it. Anyways, now, the major point I want to put out here is the fact that 
slings her, could actually projectile this further than a said arrow, that's kind of horrifying. And before y'all start saying, oh, but Templar, it's very inaccurate, as I said in the episode. No, it is not. In fact, people back then could easily pick up a rock in a sling, and they can start learning how to use the weapon. In fact, the sling has actually been known to have been used by many peasants for hunting, especially hare, or in this case, rabbit. Now, if none of y'all don't know how small a rabbit is, here's the thing. Try hitting a rabbit with a sling, and there's a huge difference. If you could hit a rabbit with a sling rather than with an arrow, then that shows how good you are with this certain weapon. In fact, it was technically uh, somewhat illegal in France for any civilian to own a certain type of weapon. However, the sling was viewed as a peasant weapon for... Uh, hunting, especially small hare. And before you all start saying, oh, but Templar, you can easily kill a wolf with that. Well, yeah, which was a certain point. However, sheep herders, they needed something to protect their sheep with, and, well, it was a certain weapon. In fact, uh, a wolf doesn't want to get pelted by something that hurts like hell, and it's actually stated that some wolves uh, that have been hit by a said uh, certain weighted uh, type of rock were said to have died technically a few uh, feet as soon as they took a couple of feet later. So, you see my point. In fact, that's why you see many sheep herders with wool, uh, with technically a pelt of a, well, a certain animal. And that's saying something. So, and which slings have actually been used for so long, in fact, pretty much throughout Europe. And not just in Europe, also in Africa, in the Middle East, and including also in Asia, and the Americas. We can pretty much see them pretty much anywhere to pretty much, well, survive. In fact, even in Australia, they actually used the sling. However, later on replaced it for the said boomerang. So, yeah. Uh, but I want to put this out here, y'all. The sling is dangerous, and that's why I have to put it out here that it's more dangerous than an arrow. Now, before y'all start saying, but Templar, the arrow can fly, this fly straight. Ah, uh, yeah, no, because there's this thing called gravity, and the thing is, after a distance, it does fall. The same goes for a rock. However, as I stated, there is the long sling, which is meant to be used as an artillery weapon. So, unless you want to get hit by such a weapon, I really don't advise going up against one of these guys. So, that's where the sling takes the advantage. So, let's also talk about the other three weapons, or in this case, other three gladiators. Now, I want to put this out here also with the other three weapons of the said Native American warriors. Well, they would actually use a certain type of weapon, such as, well, horse warfare. Now, if you don't understand, the Apache is pretty much remembered to be using horses for their type of combat role. And the thing is, that's what they were perfect with, with said bow and arrow. So, yeah, I could see that somewhat working with them. However, uh, the said gladiators had actually used said cavalry also. And these guys were known as the Equus, which uh, is a type of uh, division of gladiator who use in the gladiatorial games for said, well, cavalry. Now, before y'all also start saying, but Templar, isn't it stated that gladiators were not meant to be used for warfare and such, and there was hardly any blood? Yes, but that depends on the Roman Emperor. In fact, it was actually stated that because of the reign of Caligula, for example, is pretty much when the games got extremely bloody. In fact, I'll leave a link down below on ancients behaving badly that will explain my point. In fact, I don't understand. Caligula was kind of insane and he wanted more bloods in the game, so yada yada yada, so and so. And later on, it could even be seen with Commodus, who, if not any of y'all remember, is in the movie Gladiator, in which he's actually stated to have done the same thing as, well, uh, Caligula. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to explain that much to y'all, but you'll see my point very soon if you watch the video. But now, let's t first talk about the said tomahawk. Now, how is the tomahawk dangerous? Well, there are, I have to put this out here, there are different variations of tomahawks. There's the steel or iron quality one, 
Then there is the stone variation one, and then there is the bone variation one. So, what's the huge difference? Well, kind of obvious. Now, stone tomahawks can be used as a throwing weapon, however, they did not use them as that. They used them as a close range killing tool rather than a far range. Now, it is stated, though, that the Apache would have actually used uh, iron version ones. And of which, if none of y'all understand, the throwing design variation that they took from actually came from the French, who actually, uh, which none of y'all understand, na many Native American cultures actually adopted uh, tactics, weapons, and such, and styles from said c other European cultures. And one major uh, two examples is the uh, tomahawk and the said scalping. So, yeah, because of the French, we got scalping in the form of the Native Americans, and we got the tomahawk being thrown. Which, Native Americans did use a uh, type of axes, but they, since they were made of stone, they couldn't use them to throw, because otherwise, it's going to destroy the said uh, head sometimes, especially if it lands on something hard. So, yeah. However, this is, brings me to my point. Now, Native Americans did use uh, steel, but the thing is, the iron design quality, they would actually use it especially on horseback for a good throwing capability. Which they took that idea from the French, who used a weapon known as the Francisca, which is a throwing axe that was used by the Vikings and many other cultures. And this is what I really find whole, uh, horrifying about the Francisca. It's been known to bounce and still impact a shield or go over the shield and hit you in the head. So, yeah. And probably Native Americans probably copied off from the French and so on and started doing that and so on and so on and it quickly spread. So, yeah. However, that's my major point with the Apache. The Apache learned this somehow, which we don't know how. Maybe some certain, uh, since they lived in Texas mainly, uh, some historians actually dispute that they might have actually gotten the idea from other Native American tribes that were trying to fight against them and... Well, the Apaches learned it quickly and used it against them. So, we don't know. But, that is kind of uh, a little bit impressive and to think about, especially at the fact if the Native Americans threw the certain weapon at somebody while they're riding on horseback, that would be horrifying. However, axes, uh, here's the thing as I explained. Uh, as soon as you see a certain weapon being thrown at you, you're going to, in the process, lift up a shield, which the said gladiators have. Or one of them does, such as a Trax. Now, uh, these, I have to explain, the Trax, as I stated, has a small Scutum shield. So it's not going to do much uh, bit of a problem for him, due to the fact that the curvature of the shield is going to protect him. Now, I'm going to pretty much put this on 3-on-3 three three for this, or maybe 4-on-4, four four, depending, uh, because of the fact of the, well, said cavalry. But that brings me to it form. Now... Our major form for this is the fact that the weapons that we're using is incredibly different. And the fact is, the Apache's armor is only of buckskin, uh, which is, none of y'all know what buckskin is. Buckskin armor is technically this type of shirt-like vest, or a type of, well, fully engaged shirt. Which we do see in many films and movies, and including in Red Dead Redemption 2, apparently. However, uh, there is a Western uh, American appeal design, and then there is the Native American design. However, I'm pretty much more of a fan of the Native American design for some reason, and even Frontiersmen adopted this, especially by the 17 and 1800s. And in fact, this is how you could tell the difference between a Frontiersman and a regular uh, American citizen and such, was the fact that they were wearing buckskin-type clothing, and they were mainly out in the wild. And in fact, it's actually stated that the buckskin uh, type of shirts, or uh, whatever you want to call them, were actually so strong and resistant enough that they could stop the uh, bite of a said bear, or even a well, wild cat. However, I have to put this out here in the form of that. It, it couldn't stop uh, said blows of a, well, bludgeon weapon, such as like that if we were to be hit by a war club. So, yeah. However, they do have a rawhide shield, but rawhide uh, is strong and resistant enough to stop certain weapons. But uh, since it's mostly just rawhide, uh, yeah, 
Now, I did not include weapons in this, uh, firearms in this entirely for a uh, major reason. Gladiators did not have firearms, so, uh, yeah, that's why we don't have it included. But, uh, I have to put this out here. The major reason for this is entirely for that reason because of the fact. So, in true buckskin and rawhide shield armor, uh, was incredibly awesome for them to use. But still, now, with the War Club, I do see them somewhat winning with this until they hit something like, uh, the helmet. Which, before you all start saying, oh, it weighs 15 pounds, no, it actually weighs less than that. It weighs, like, somewhere between 5 and 7 pounds. And that's light compared to what the Apache, uh, said, uh, well, <laughs> said in the show. Which, it... This is why I really don't like this show much. It's good for entertainment, but not historical accuracy. Uh, but yeah, you pretty much already knew that from uh, my welcoming for the... Uh, and, uh, my welcoming announcement with the, uh, well, 1,000 uh, subscribers. So yeah. Uh, but now, in truth, we have to understand that the fact that the War Club is a dangerous weapon, especially if you got, well, whacked at it but only in the naked flesh. So that does not include anything to help a said Apache warrior, unless he's probably fighting against the uh, Retirias, which maybe he would win, I'm not certain. I probably don't see this working. However, the bow and arrow, as I said, no, 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 not down the line. Of which we have to understand, this is the major point in history that we have to understand the major difference about these weapons. Now, the rawhide shield can be can stop certain blows of weapons, such as, say, a bladed sword. Especially, in fact, rawhide is strong enough to resist, actually, a steel sword enough to stop it, which is kind of impressive. Now, uh, in truth, though, let's actually put this point in history. Can any of the four weapons from the Apache weapons defeat a said Trax warrior? Uh... Kind of, maybe, but the thing is, with the War Club, no. With the said bow and arrow, probably, depending if they hit him in the back. Uh, Tomahawk, probably not. And the knife, no. In fact, as soon as the Apache gets close in range, now, many of you might say, but Templar, the Apache is a close range killer. Yeah, for ambush and stealth combat, but as soon as, he know, as his enemy knows that he's there, the knife is not going to work, especially against a gladiator. In fact, the knife was perfect going against said uh, naked flesh, or in this case, uh, cotton clothing and wool clothing. But when it comes to a guy who's outfitted with weapons and armor, that of which is meant to stop certain weapons, I don't see that working. And the thing is, uh, mostly a lot of the knives that were used by Apaches were mostly made out of flint. And flint is very breakable, meaning even if you sharpen it enough and harden it enough, which is near impossible, uh, you're not gonna go through bronze plate armor, which, yeah, no. So, the tracks would probably defeat the said, well, <laughs> Apache. The same could also be said with the scissor. The scissor is pretty much just covered in armor. There's no way what uh, an Apache is probably going to kill this guy. My, the only way I could probably see them killing this guy is if they sneak up behind him like two guys are facing off against him. One is distracting him in front while the other kind of comes around and uses his knife to slit his throat. I can probably only see that working. But the problem is that's the only way I could see this working. Now, what about with the Retirus? Well, this is a major thing I have without here. The Retirius, it has the trident at net combo. And here's the thing, it's both, the net is both for defense and offense, meaning I can easily wrap him around with the said net, pull him towards me, and then thrust in the trident. In fact, in the said episode, they actually talk about how dangerous the trident is when it thrusts into somebody, what happens is, due to those barbs on the very end of the said weapon, guess what? I'm ripping out his own intestines with the said weapon. So I don't see an Apache pretty much stopping this thing. Now, uh, one major thing I have put out here, uh, buckskin and rawhide has been known to stop cutting weapons. However, 
uh, it cannot stop a thrust. Now, this is a medieval dagger, but uh, this is my major point to it. Uh, in truth, they would not stop a said thrusting weapon, which is why, uh, during the time in warfare, uh, many forms of soldiers would have actually been equipped with a said bayonet, especially to stop a certain uh, Native American charge. And that was kind of the horrifying part, especially to the fact that these weapons are dangerous enough to kill, and even though to the fact, in fact, in Arkansas, they made a type of Bowie knife, which is a elongated version of something like this, to uh, not be used for cutting, but used for thrusting. And it's been known, nicknamed the toothpick to technically thrust through a Native American body. So, yeah. That's our major point we had to put out here, and which is why I had to explain it. So, yeah, I don't see the Apache winning this at all, guys, especially with arms and armor. But with tactics, yes. In fact, the tactics they would use, I actually had to give them this, which, in truth, their major tactics is with ambush, stealth, and including horse warfare. While the said cavalry that was used by the said, well, uh, gladiators, it would be somewhat like we would see with the uh, Spartan Revolt or the Great Slave Revolt with gladiators and such, and which would be like the hammer and anvil. If you don't know what the hammer and anvil uh, type of tactic is, uh, technically you just take a look at Hannibal Barca when he defeated the Roman legions. He in the process actually uh, used his infantry as the anvil, trapping them in, and next thing you know, here comes the cavalry being the said hammer. They're attacking, repeated blows. Now, in truth, I do see that working also, but the design variation of the said cavalry for the Apache is slightly different. One is the major form that the weaponry that is going to be used is slightly different because the Apache warrior has been known to throw tomahawks, especially the uh, iron design versions, while when they get close they use the bone or the stone. Now, they would also use the bow and arrow in close range for a maximum impacted hit. Now, if you don't understand, uh, Apache warfare was mainly that of stealth. It was not that of what we see in this episode, it does not make any sense, because one, I don't see the Apache probably winning this entirely if they went up against them one-on-one. -on -one. In fact, the Apache is kind of like the ninja of the said Native American Great Plains and such of Texas. In fact, uh, Texans, Mexicans, Hispanics, uh, Spanish people, uh, you see my point. Anyone who pretty much has come to Texas and such has actually reported of how dangerous this said Native American group was. They stated on their stealth was almost as though they camouflaged themselves in the foliage. So, that explains their ambush stripe strategy, which uh, a lot of times over, there are a lot of uh, said special forces that are trained by Apache uh, people, or type of tribesmen, and how to do special type combat tactics, which is pretty much awesome here for the United States. Now, uh, I have to put this out here though, the tomahawk, it would have been great for range killing, but as soon as you get in close, that's not going to work out so well. Due to the fact the gladiator is built like a tank, compared to a guy like me that's built, well, not exactly the same way. In fact, they even brought in a heavyweight champion, or a boxing champion, which that proves of how dangerous these guys are. And these guys are tough enough to take a blow incredibly dangerous. So, yeah. Now, I had to put this out here. The Kestis has been known for slicing. The, what they show pretty much in there is just punching. No, it wasn't just meant for punching. It was meant for hooking. It was meant for piercing. It was meant for slicing. You see the whole point? That design is dangerous enough, and is which is why I don't see an Apache getting away from that. Especially to the fact the scissor could probably hook him in the leg and push him down while he then draws his next weapon and thrusts it into his buckskin armor. So I don't see that helping out the Apache at all. Now, the tactics for the, uh, said, well, I want to say, uh, gladiator, uh, this one I had to put them out for was pretty much charging forward and also, uh, well, no, uh, pretty much close range. Now, close range is perfect for them, but the Apache can pretty much use ambush strategy. 
which I had to give the points into here. However, uh, if I had to calculate it down due to their armor, their uh, the weaponry such as the scissor, the sling, and as well the trident and net combination, and against the, which uh, I had to give the well said gladiators four points compared to the Apaches three points with their form of warfare such as ambush, stealth, and including well uh, horse warfare. So yeah. Now, that is where we got to put this out. So, who would win with these type of points? Well, the Gladiator. Now, the Gladiator only gets one point up due to the fact that the said weapon, known as the Sika Sword and the War Club, are very dangerous weapons, but that's my point to it. Now, the Sika pretty much can't go through a rawhide shield due to the fact the rawhide shields are tough enough and resistant enough to stop that. However, it is known to be double-edged. Now, that is dangerous enough, and even if you have that rawhide shield, he is still thrust upward in your unprotected scrotum. Or, in this case, the groin. So, yeah. Now, with that form in history, we have to understand that the War Club was perfect in that said episode. However, it could not go through the said helmet. So, that's what I have to put out here. So, who wins this? The Gladiator. Now, I am hear a lot of Apaches pretty much going... <laughs> Hang on, I gotta go deal with some Apaches real quick. I'll be right back. Act all crazy. Yeah, I know you're all bad. Go suck on my man. Bless you freaking nut jobs. What the hell is wrong with you people? Huh? Okay. Hey guys, I'm welcome back. Sorry about that. Apaches don't know when to take no for an answer. But, yeah. Anyways, guys, as I stated, the Apache pretty much lost this battle due to the fact that they can't exactly, well, have the certain armor and equipment that the Gladiator has. So, yeah, I know, I know, pretty much, Templar, this doesn't make any sense. Here's the thing. I have to pretty much do the type of numbers and system to the fact that pretty much we gotta understand just because a computer says it's true that the Apache won, it doesn't mean it's true. Due to the fact, uh, a lot of times over, numbers actually are proven wrong. In which, due to the fact that the Gladiator has certain arms and armor that are meant to be used in a certain way, I don't see an Apache getting past these. Now, I can see them somewhat getting past them, especially with their tactics. Now, even if their stealth manages to kill one of the said gladiators, which, here's the thing, we have three on three. So, how would this work? Well, here's the major thing. I could see pretty much that the tactics that one of the gladiators would probably die from the stealth or ambush style tactic. However, the said weaponry, that would cost them, especially as soon as they are, well, informed. Now, it depends on who or what they kill. But the thing is, as soon as they probably kill the scissor, I could see them somewhat winning. But, that's a major thing. As soon as they kill the scissor, they would probably use ambush strategy to fire an arrow. Which would probably kill one of the other guys. Which would probably be the Red Hiss. Which, then the Trax is all by himself. However, he could probably kill another two out of that. Or probably one. And, even if they manage to, and even if he manages to survive and kill another one then the other one dies. But, the thing is, the what if they kill the guy that's pretty much mostly unarmored, like the Red Tears, or the Trax? Well, uh, let's put that into major form. Even if they kill this guy first, guess what? The next two, they're going to end up killing the other two, and then there's one last Apache who probably kills either the Sisyros or the Trax. So, who would probably kill him? Hard to say, but I could probably see this t the type of strategy and form, and the gladiators would still win this, so yeah, I'm sorry to anybody. Now, even I have a little bit of Apache and Comanche blood, but even I have to say that this episode made no sense whatsoever, so sorry about that, y'all. But we have to understand that the armor and equipment that is used by the gladiator is effective enough and strong enough to resist technically the weapons of a said Apache. 
while the Apache just wears buckskin and rawhide. So, yeah. However, though, if y'all want to take the, uh, say that, well, there has to be another way that they could have probably won. Well, uh, yes, there might have been. Problem is, I still don't see this probably ending well for the said Apache, which I'm sorry to say. Now, don't get me wrong, the Apaches are pretty much badass warriors, especially for ambush strategy combat. In fact, here in Texas, there are many stories of them fighting against the said Texians sometimes. However, they've also been known to fight against the Spanish and Mexican armies, and even the United States, and defeat them, both in the American Civil War, and even sometime after which. So, that explains how dangerous and, well, horrifying these guys are. But still, the gladiators are still probably a little bit more tougher and dangerous than them. Even if it was a one-on-one -on -one with these two guys, I could still technically see the said gladiator somewhat winning, only to probably later die somewhat after. But, yeah. Uh, but anyways, guys, hopefully you liked this video. Like and subscribe for more. And hopefully y'all can actually see more on our Who's Deadliest type series. Which, uh, very soon I'm going to have to go into the Samurai and Vikings soon. Uh, which that one is really, really bad. Trust me, I don't want to explain to y'all on how bad it is until the next video. So, yeah. Anyways, guys, like and subscribe. Also, click that bell button for more notifications when that next video comes up. As well, also check out our Facebook, so that way you know what other videos are going to be coming up soon. Anyways, guys, it's been Templar, and have a great day. Mm -hmm.